don't want to be recorded, you can watch the recording on YouTube instead. We'll post that in the next couple days on YouTube and have it available through the, the Tacoma Public Schools site for you to uh, watch. So um, I have turned off my incoming video at this point in time, but there will be an opportunity later on in the meeting to show your video if you would like to, and that part would be recorded. So um, let's let me admit everyone here. All right, so welcome. Um, this is our second family support webinar. I'm Kimberly Wolf. I'm an instructional facilitator, and I love teams. It's the way that we will be communicating like this, and there's all kinds of settings and things, and I want to share that with you. Um, your students will be using teams for meetings like this, this virtual meeting experience, um, no matter what, no, whether they're in the online choice or whether they're in the remote and hybrid choice that Tacoma Public Schools is offering. So both of those or all of the students will use Teams as the meeting platform for virtual conversations like this. So we want to begin. Um, Emily Bannon is going to be helping to man our chat. Um, there are there's a chat window that can open up on the right hand side. I'll show you that in a moment and she will do her best to answer questions that are about teams meetings. If you have questions that are uh, that are unrelated, we will give you an opportunity to um, put those in a form so that we can address those at a later time. If you would prefer to listen to this webinar in another language, I'm going to drop um, a conversation code into the chat so that you can do just that. You would need to have the um, Microsoft Translator app on your phone and you would put that code right here or you can go to Obi, a web browser and type in translate.it and put that conversation code in there. This is your, about your school. Let me make sure that you all are muted. Um, let me real quick hit mute all, but just a good general thing to keep in mind is to make sure that you mute when you join one of these meetings. Um, and that brings us to this slide. The mute can be found, and I just muted everyone just with the click of one button right now, but sometimes it's hard, especially for the teacher to be juggling that piece and showing, you know, keeping their eye on what they're sharing and the content that they're teaching. So um, it's it's actually good to talk with your your son or daughter to talk with them about making sure that that mute is on before they join the meeting. And that's also because there's all kinds of noise. You know, there's background noise, there's dishwashers running, wind blowing, um, tapping of keyboards. So it's a good idea to mute your mic. And you'll find that if you're in the desktop version, like the the if your student has their device that they're borrowing from the school and they have the the app for teams open it's in the top you'll find a, this bar this this menu and it will have the microphone on it and when they click that it'll have a line through it and that mutes and if you are on your own personal device and you might have an older version of teams or maybe you're in the online version you're, you would move your mouse around and your toolbar might show up sort of down here, but it's the same same icons. They're just maybe in a different order in, the, in a different location. So please mute yourselves. Kimberly, this is Emily. Yes, I'm so hi, sorry, Emily. but when you have a chance and when it's appropriate, could you make me a presenter so I could admit from the lobby and mute people That's as they come right. in? That's right. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry, I, just, I missed that. I am so glad that you reminded me to do that because... We originally had a different plan, didn't we? Let me find Emily. But we are flexible and we're good. Yay, and I appreciate that. And that's the thing. It's the best way to go. Okay. So thank you, Emily. All right. Our objectives today, what we're going to be covering, we're going to be just looking at all the different ways to join a meeting. Well, you guys obviously joined. So we've gotten that. One of the, one of the things almost checked off. I'll show you some of the other ways to join a team's meeting. We will look at some of the settings and then we'll also look at ways that we can make team meetings more interactive. So 
we are going to ask you to use the chat. So you'll look for that that menu bar and you'll that toolbar will have a little speech bubble. We'd ask you to use that in order to have conversations. Raise your hand if you need if you have something that's very urgent and you don't have that chat available because um, the the chat is available in different places depending on how you join the meeting. Also, you might be on a cell phone and or a tablet and Teams meetings work on those as well, but they're in a but the settings are slightly different. All right, let's look at what to do if you have a question. If it's a question related to Teams meetings, go ahead and ask that in the chat if you're able to do that. Um, you can always come off mic if it's something relevant to what I'm showing on the screen and presenting. And you can ask the question orally, if verbally, if you'd like to. Um, and Emily will be helping with the chat. If it's a question that's sort of not related, but you know, when you see some of this material, it might trigger a thought or a, some suggestion that you might have for the district to have maybe another um, webinar topic, whatever the suggestion is. We would ask that you use this URL and it's a form and it just has two questions. First one is, do you have a question or a suggestion? The second one is, what is your question or suggestion? And then the third is an option for you to give us your information, your contact information if you want follow up. So um, I will pop that in the chat unless Emily beat me to it. It's already there. Thank you. And if you're wondering what this thing is, this weird looking thing, it's called a QR code where my mouse is moving and you can use your cell phone, open up the, the, the camera app and sort of take a, not don't take a picture of it, but hold it up. And that might work to take you straight to the Microsoft form so that you could submit your question. And if you're watching, this is a recording. You can do that or you can actually just write this down and use and go to a web browser for your quest to submit your questions. All right, there are two ways or two. Let me just say there's a difference. Let's just go with that. There's a difference between a team's meeting, which is what's happening here with us right now and a class team. So a class team is where your students and your teachers are going to be members. And so when your student logs into Office 365 and clicks on the team icon, the team app, this would open and they will have courses. If they're secondary, they'll have their first period, second period and so forth. If they're elementary, they're going to find their team here too. And that is different than our experience because we aren't together in a class team, but we are together in a team meeting. So today's conversation is about Teams meetings. So how to join a meeting? Congratulations, you joined, you did it. You just clicked a link and you can find that link in an email and a web page. Um, it might have been on Facebook. I heard somebody was putting it on Facebook so that families can participate in these webinars. There are gonna be, there's 15 of the webinars already scheduled. There's five different topics. So do look for more of those. Maybe your student will go to your teacher's Sway or to your teacher's school um, website to, to get the link for the meeting. In a couple weeks, we'll be using Schoology for um, if you've chosen the, the uh, remote and hybrid option. We'll be using Schoology, but there will still be Teams meetings. If you are in the Tacoma Online option and you're in Edgenuity, you will still use Teams meetings for uh, your face-to-face, -face, your, sorry, your virtual class synchronous uh, learning. You can also get the join links from an Outlook calendar if, if you're teacher sends you um, an invitation to maybe an IEP meeting, you'll be able to open up that calendar invite and click the join there. It's always, it's almost always purple and it's almost always says join. In uh, your students may be directed to go to their team and then click on the join link to join the meeting from the team. So lots of different ways, but really it all amounts to clicking on something that says join. 
OK, so when you join a meeting from a link, it's going to give you some choices and usually it'll take you to a web browser and you can open it up in that web browser and continue in Edge or Chrome. Those are the best browsers to use. So you can just have the meeting in the in, in on, online in the Internet, but you have more features and it is especially best for students to open the meeting in the Teams app and you might have a little pop up that comes up at the top and you'll need to click to have it open in the Teams app. And by the Teams app, I just mean the program that's on the computer and you would know the difference. It kind of looks the same when it opens, except that the online version has your web browser at the top with your your website address, you know, the HTTP stuff, and then the other version doesn't have that. And it has a little bit more options. So whenever whenever possible, open it in the online version. So I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be moving to the actual Teams application to show you some information about chatting, device settings, meeting views, and live captions. And then I'll show you some slides and we'll recap. So let me pop into my Teams. And when your student goes into Teams, it'll look like this. But if they're just joining from a link for the very first time, then they're going to see something like this. And you're going to have these tools at the top. You'll have chat on the right hand side if you were to click it. And this may be something similar to what you guys are seeing right now. Um, the you, you're going to actually see sort of the same window inside of the window. Now I've turned off incoming video so that in the recording your videos won't be showing. And I've got the chat here showing on the right. If I didn't want the chat to show, I can close it and then I can maximize my screen real estate so that if the teacher was demonstrating something here you know maybe doing some math problems or something it would take up the whole screen and that's super helpful to maximize your screen space but having the chat window open is kind of nice and you can separate when you're using the team app you can separate your teams from your actual team meeting so I would click on this little thing that says show participants, but just for people's privacy, I think it, it's best not to. It will en end up showing everyone. It will be a list of everyone who's participating in the meeting. And it will it, that will also be where if they're raising their hand, it will show up. And there's, this is the hand raise. Will somebody do me a favor? Emily, will you please raise your hand so that we can see what happens? There we go. So Emily has turned a little bit. There's yellow around her circle or, or around her face. And then the, the little box that she's in has turned yellow. Also, I have the teacher has a notification at the top that you've raised a hand. It doesn't last very long, but me, the teacher, she's put it down again. Hip. <laughs> she put it back. <laughs> and when she, when the teacher goes to show participants, they will have the class list and see who's got their hand raised. And that's really great turn taking protocol for the online experience. Just like when you're online face to face, you've got certain routines. So the teachers will begin in the first couple meetings to talk about and start establishing those agreements, those class routines and agreements. Um, so then let's also talk about cameras. You do have the option of turning your camera off. Right now I've got mine on and you do have the option of turning your mic back on and muting it. And again, your student will have some sort of rules and expectations in the classroom for that routine. Somebody's come in with somebody's come in with their mic on, so we want to ask you to mute it. And then this little thing is how students can share their screen if that's something that the teacher has asked for, you know, so, so that they can show maybe some of their work. Um, I'm going to now show you guys. Um, let's actually go down to the chat. Let's start with that. So down here in the chat, I can start typing my message. But 
I can also click this little A with the pencil so that I can format it. What that does is that gives me the chance so that I can bold and use italics and highlight things. So extra features. I also have um, the ability to attach things, use emojis, which is kind of fun. That feature can be turned off for teachers and that might be something that they choose to do at the beginning before they before they talk with their class about, you know, just making agreements about expectations for for online behavior. But um, they also might allow giffies. And there's also um, these little stickers and so forth that kind of add to the fun. It's also a creative way for students to demonstrate how they're feeling. So I know a lot of times with the with the younger grades that the emojis are a good way for them to talk and communicate. OK, so that's the chat. Next is device settings. So you can find the device settings right in this three dot spot. That's when you hover over, it says more actions in the toolbar. So we're going to just start at the top. When I click on device settings, it's going to allow me to set my mic, you know, my microphone and select my camera. For students, that's pretty much a default. The default microphone that's built in with student with with teacher devices is this one and the student one. It's probably going to be the only one. I have an external mic that's that is an option for me, but this is the one that's just that I'm using on the laptop that comes with it. Works pretty great. I have selected a an, another external camera that I'm using, but the one that comes with the laptop works really well. So you'll want to make sure that you select those. And if your student is using headphones, which is something that maybe is needed when you're in a household sitting around maybe a kitchen table with two or three kids online at the same time, that those headphones will come in handy. And in that case, they would want to select their headphones for the speaker and the microphone. All right. So the next option down are meeting details. That just tells you the information that you need um, for what the meeting is, the join link, all of those good details. The next one is the different ways that you can view. Now we do not have cameras showing right now because I have selected to turn off incoming video for me. Why would somebody want to do that? Well, the videos are helpful, but they're also a little bit distracting. So it's kind of nice to um, turn them off sometimes so that you can focus on something that's happening like the content that's being shown. There's a lot of different ways to show what people look like. Gallery is one and then there's together mode. I'm going to switch just because for privacy I'm afraid that some students haven't maybe signed a waiver or that maybe they're on right now and they haven't had a conversation with their families about whether they should be showing themselves and this will be recorded and available for the public. So I'm not going to show video right now, but I do have a picture of what that looks like. So I'm going to show you whoop, right here. So you have three different ways to show pictures. So when your student is with their class in a in a meeting, a team's meeting, and there are 10 people, nine people will show like this, and then the 10th one will be down in the corner. And that's a three by three grid. And then there's the large gallery. So when there's more people, 11 or more people, up to 49 people's faces, videos can show. And then the new fun together mode is kind of cool. It makes it look like you're in a stadium. One of the things I like about this view is that it removes all of the background distractions. So that, so like in, in this picture here, the large gallery, you can see that everyone's background is different. So 
you know, he looks like he's in the garden. There's some blue stuff here. That's a lot of visual distraction. And it's easier to focus on facial expressions and body language when you're in a in this together mode. So I wanted to show you that. Going back to, you know, so these these would be people's videos right now instead of circles. Um, and that is right here. So what I just showed you is we're in gallery view right now. If we had more than 10 videos at once, this would be an option. And I could see, you know, up to 49 tiled people videos. And then together mode is this one, the one where it looks like everybody's sitting in chairs. So I'm going to ask Emily to turn her video on so I can show how to pin her. <laughs> Emily is is. I'm he I'm here. Is that something that you're able to do? Are you my in a camera, situation? My camera is on, but I think you have to turn on. Yes, I video. do. And I guess I don't want to do that, but I can demonstrate this um, in a different way. I uh, do like Kimberly. I like that you are spending so much time discussing the importance of considering when or when not to have incoming video on because Kimberly is recording this session and we're very aware of how many people we have. We have students, we have teachers, we have parents in this meeting right now. We're being extra cautious and careful mm -hmm. where a teacher is not normally recording a session and we are recording this. And so thank you. thank you for being so cautious with that. Yes, yes, you're welcome. And I think that's a good point. So really what I want to show is that if I wanted to focus in on Emily, so I, you know, maybe we're doing show and tell or something, I don't know. And everyone's just showing something that they've done, you know, displaying work or something like this. Um, and you wanna see one of them close up, I can right click on the person and then I can pin. Now it will make, it's hard for you to imagine this, but you can see that Emily is the only one on my screen right now. So if her video was showing, in fact, I could turn off video, but you get the idea. It would be large and I could see just her and then everyone else moves to the bottom in little tiles. So if I decide, oh, I want to pin one more person, I could right click on them and pin them as well. So I'm going to do the same. Now I've got two. So you can pin people and move them around. If Emily's video was not completely showing, I could right click on it and then do something that says fit to frame. And because if you're on cell phones or if you're on different different video cameras that are that are connected, sometimes it cuts off the person. And if you right click and select fit to frame, it will move the person so you can see the whole person. All right, um, I'm going to unpin everyone so that I can see all all the participants again. Kimberly, this is Emily. Yes. We had some questions about gallery view. And, and I had put that gallery view is a pretty new feature for a lot of us, which is amazing. And to be honest, I haven't tried it on a Mac yet. So oh. I'm not quite sure how to find mm -hmm. it on a Mac. And if somebody doesn't see the gallery view as an option, maybe um, – that could be uh, so the gallery mute the, sorry the together mode is the together new one, mode, right yeah. the together mode is new and so if somebody's not seeing gallery could it be maybe that the size of their screen is too small where it doesn't permit the gallery or they're using an app that needs to be updated are those some things that you're would be I think appropriate that's, yeah that's those are absolutely good good guesses Okay, thank you for yes. that. I mean, there's so many ver variety. That's one of the things I want to point out. Because of the nature of technology and how there's so many devices, you know, Macs and and HPs and Dells and, and cell phones, there's Android and there's iPhones. So it really will help that if your student has a device that's that's checked out from Tacoma Public Schools, that they use that. Because then when we troubleshoot everything is standardized and it will be much easier for the help desk to even remote in and fix things um, so if there is a question about a feature um, we can certainly help to you know even google it sometimes to find the answer if it's on a you know a different device but do encourage i, I encourage you to have your students use their device that's checked out to them just for that reason alone that when their teacher says, oh, it looks like this on mine, it should look like that on the students as well. 
All right, so I did want to point out that there's live captions. I'm going to turn those on right now because I'm sharing my screen and you can see those live captions. Um, they, here they come. So the live captions are a feature that is available for the, uh, the user. So everybody doesn't need to see the live captions all the time. For example, this is being recorded. It will be posted on YouTube and the captions will be built in available for the YouTube viewer. Um, so if you have students or if you know of people who need the captions, that is in your control as the member or as the participant in the meeting. You can just see mine right now because I'm sharing my screen, but if a teacher was sharing maybe a PowerPoint and not sharing their screen, her captions wouldn't show for you. So you are in control of the captions yourself. So I'm going to turn off my captions. Right now they're only available in English. All right, um, I think the last thing that I want to show you is the, um, your ability to change your background. Now it's not, the background effects aren't available for everyone all the time and all devices, but um, I did want to point out that it's an option for you and blurring the background is really helpful. It might not be good if you're doing um, ASL sign language. So, because when you do blur the background, I'm going to show you again how I did that really quick because I was talking as I did it. I'm going to click my more actions, the three dots. Then I'm going to go down to apply background effects and it's available in the app, the, the Teams app. And I'm going to blur my background and I'm going to apply. And I might even want to stop sharing my screen so that you can see me larger. No, you couldn't. I guess it makes sense that you can't see me because I'm in my view, I'm diminished, but for you, I, I may be bigger and you could certainly right click and pin on me, but you can see my tiny little picture down here. I wonder if I can pin myself. I can't pin myself in my own meeting, but you can certainly pin me and make me larger. See how it's blurred. And I could also select this the one that I really love is, is one that I uploaded myself. And I don't know if students will have the ability to upload their own but um, teachers can, and it's sort of fun. So I've got the gum wall showing behind me, the Seattle gum wall. This is going to be helpful though, the ability to choose one of these backgrounds that's kind of already preloaded from Microsoft Teams. That helps, so if you've got laundry behind you, it just gives you some privacy. I just, I just feel like that's a really good choice for families who are having students participating in these online meetings. So um, blur is there and then any of these is available for you to choose okay we've only got two more minutes so i'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quickly and show you the powerpoint back to the powerpoint i want to make sure that i covered all the things in chat i'm glad i have this because i did forget i forgot to show you um, that in in chat there is the ability to at mention something. So if a student wants to make sure that their teacher sees their message, they can use the at symbol and then start typing their teacher's name. And that will kind of give a, a notification to their teacher that they have been asked a question. Um, we talked about settings. We talked about this. We talked about live captions. And we I just wanted to pop that up here again, that if you had questions and suggestions about other topics that are not about Teams meetings, you can go there. Uh, I want to be sure that you know where to go to get help. There's on your student devices, there's a question mark. It's this blue question mark right on the desktop of the, of the laptop. And when they click that, it will take them to a place that offers help. There's also on our district website, there is this family support center. So when you are right on, let's see if we're on the Tacoma public website, I encourage you by the way to click this return to school guide and read that, that's good stuff. But when you are here um, and you go to families and then family support center, there's all kinds of help. These are the rest of the family webinars that we're offering, these are some YouTube videos that you can watch on your own. You can click for technology help here. Here's technology help. 
So that's where to go for help. And these phone numbers, this phone number and this email work as well. So that's a wrap. I do ask you that if you found this session helpful to please let us know. And if you have feedback about future sessions, it will help us to make them even better. So if you could take a quick moment and answer the, the a few questions, I will put the link to this exit survey in the chat. And um, it would really be awesome if you guys could respond to that. Emily, was there anything that came up before hey, we actually say goodbye? I when when you stop recording, I'm wondering if we could do a little bit of video exploration when we don't have the recording going. That's awesome. Because idea. we have some really good questions about video and I'm trying to do frantic research off to the side. And uh, and I think, yes, let's do that. All right. <laughs> okay, so thanks. so you're exactly. going to stop the recording first when, when, when it's fine. So okay. this is a wrap. Um, we have looked at Microsoft team meetings and some of the settings and features. Um, your, your student will be learning this alongside the teachers and uh, it's nice that you guys have joined to be that guide on the side and help help your student to be successful. I'm going to stop the recording and I will stay though. Give me one second to stop that recording. Thank you all for joining us.